my talk is about apple trees and how to prune them and like the basic five principles or more like the worst mistakes you can avoid quite easily. Um, first of all, an apple tree is not a nature product. It's a culture tree. There are two, two in fact, there are two individuals. One is a root and one is the thing that, that uh, produces these nice apples. The, the, the variety that was grafted onto, like, yeah. So this is not behaving like a natural tree. This is, um, this was bred to get very big apples. Um, so in nature, if you, or if you just leave an apple tree like this, you see it collapse, it falls down. It's too much weight, too much fruit, too big fruit to support such, so, so much fruit, it's, it's too, too thin. So if you, if you often in permaculture books, especially with Sepp Holzer, you read, don't prune them at all, they are nature, just leave them. It's too much work, it's not worth the, the, uh, the, the investment, the time and... Uh, yeah, but then this happens. This looks nice at the first, it's a lot of fruit, oh nice, I can pick them, have a lot of fruit. Yeah, but next year this, le this tree will just lay on the ground. It will not become a big apple tree where you can harvest hundreds of kilos of apples. So it has to be pruned. It's a, um, it's a culture tree. Um, so it needs some management. Um, and the five um, things I want to tell you is uh, to avoid, if you come maybe even with camera to see that. Here's, here's the typical situation where you can see that these branches, they're too narrow. They produce these, these gaps here. In Germany we call that Schlitzast, like there's a... Uh, yeah? So that, that happens when, when uh, there, there was um, a cut here, or maybe the graft even. Maybe this is a graft, I don't know. It, uh, maybe it's more, more on the... But it could be that there, this is a graft. And so that these buds, the, the terminal bud, the highest, was, break, was broken. Maybe there was a bird sitting on it, or while you are transporting it from the nursery to your side, was breaking. And all the lower buds were were shooting and then these often happens that the the and that uh, builds a very tough structure where you can have big branches with a lot of apples on them uh, and it holds way way better than this because you see even if I bow down this it opens the split so when here this branch would be bigger or even here it's the same situation it builds these splits then uh, when there's wind and the shaking, it bends open and then it, there's a wound and the fungi gets in and the tree is ruined. So always cut these type of, of branches. Um, that's that's uh, the most important uh, thing because uh, if you don't do that, it will split one day and ruin the tree because when you cut it, it's just a small wound. But when you, it's ripped off, then maybe the bark is ripped off up to here. And that's a big wound and yeah. So this is the first thing. Do it as early as possible. When you see it as a small tree, just like pencil here, just a little, a little uh, cut is, is, is totally fine uh, compared to these big cuts. If I do things like that, where there's two similar big branches, um, I used to, to cut it not here, cut it the first year here to let the wound heal a little bit, become this, let this thing get bigger and when later, maybe two years later, cut it here because then this will be like this and will be bigger and uh, it's, it's able to, to heal this smaller wound. Um, yeah, so this is the first thing, cut these, how do you call that? Repeat it please. Okay, and then um, this is the first thing. And then um, the second thing where often people make mistakes is that they um, maybe they have, they're right that they've chosen the the right um, root. The rootstock is is uh, saying the height of the tree, yeah. Like the, what what does the tree want to be become? 
how big it will, uh, will be. So the, the different types of roots you can choose an apple and pear. In walnut it's difficult, chestnut it's, it's no no root stock so you can decide uh, or just very roughly. But in apples you can decide I want a three and a half apple uh, meter high apple tree at the end or I want a 12 meter high. So this is a, a very important thing to choose the right root system. If you have chosen the right, especially for your design, I mean, yeah, it's a big point. If, how big does this apple tree get? Um, do I want to collect apples? Maybe a smaller one is, is nice to, to collect the apples. Do I want uh, making juice? A big tree is fine. Um, so uh, if I've done that right, choose the right, um, right route, then how, how high do I want to prune them? Because often if you see that, that tree next to the, to the path, you've, I think you've all walked there and said, oh, annoying tree, come on, I have to go there and leave the path. So don't be afraid to cut things that are in the way. Often it's, in, in some, some situation it's nice, especially at the, at the front, like to, 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 to bow a little bit and oh, now I'm the forest garden in the paradise and like a gate, yeah? That could be used in some ways, but often like the, it's just annoying, yeah? So, so prune these branches that are in the way right at the beginning when, when, I, when I, uh, just don't wait until this date where there's big wounds uh, when I cut this. Cut them when they're small and, and lift them up to a height even when a, a branch is full of fruit and lays down it's not in the way. So prune up one meter higher even. Then you have space that the, 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 the fruit can lay down, the branches can grow down a little bit. This is for general fr uh, fruit tree. There are special roots how, when and how to cut it, but that's too, too detailed for now. Cherries are quite, um, the, the, the apples are quite robust. You can cut them like pears. They, they really sprout. But stone fruits, they are a little bit fragile. Yeah, they they don't like cuts and uh, so much. Yeah, um, chestnut and and walnut can stand very tough cuts. Um, so the, this is the second thing: cut the two heights that makes sense in even one meter higher. Oh yeah, the ones that the typical thing that you find every pruning how to prune apple tree book: the things that go in, you have to cut. In 99% of the situation that makes totally sense because if you want to climb into the tree or work in the tree or the light needs to go into the tree to get good apple trees, good apples, uh, it makes sense to, to prune and cut the, the branches that are pointing inside the tree. Yeah? Because they will shade out the inner part. But sometimes when you have a very long and old branch going like this and it bows down because it was not pruned enough to, to stay like this and it's like this. Sometimes there's a, a shoot on the top that can be the new, new leader. So often uh, when I prune I leave one of these and often the, the old guy is sitting there in the, and next to it and looking what I'm doing because I'm pruning his apple trees that he has pruned for 40 years, yeah, and I said, oh, I cut this one. Yeah, and I have to explain him why this is the future and because he has missed to, to cut in the right moment that it, the, the end stays like this. Yeah, so cut that what's inside, but always uh, think still, uh, not like a robot, yeah? Don't cut everything, still be creative with the tree, yeah? Choose, uh, if you have a situation like this, there are two uh, similar, um, from the size, similar uh, branches. So which one of these is a leader? Which one is the future? Which, which, uh, which uh, branch will grow higher? Yeah, it could be, it could be this one, it's longer. But if you, if you raise it up like this, maybe it's the other one. So always when you have a situation where there are two, yeah, two competitive branches, you have to choose one and do that when you when you realize it not like oh I, I i give it two more years to 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 see what happens 
the cut gets bigger and bigger. The problem gets bigger and bigger. You lose the energy that can be, can be used for the one that you decided. So choose one central leader that goes up and it depends on the system that you are pruning and pruning. You have four big branches or three or five or no, no other big branches and it's, it's more like a pyramid. But there's always one central leader yeah, that makes sense to, to understand the tree, to, to break down the complexity of branches to know, okay, this is a central leader, I will prune that up and there are some side branches but this is the main thing. The, that I have to protect uh, against bowing down or against um, uh, breaking and, and this has to be like also the biggest branch because the, the size of the branch said how much photosynthesis, how much leaf area it is supporting. Of course there are thousands of systems and every pruner has his own idea in, in the head of how a tree has to look like but I think um, for most of the systems and in my understanding it makes absolutely sense to have one central leader in nearly all of the fruit but it's it's hard to say that because it's, it's so complex yeah yeah that's there, there's for example in the medieval times in England they pruned with an open like like this yeah with no central leader the problem is that here's so much light in the middle that you will have shoots every year to try to fill that gap. If you have a central leader, the, the amount of light is not that much that you provoke the tree to grow something there. Because the tree has the, the, the aim, it's like, it's, it's still a forest tree. An apple is a climax forest tree in Kazakhstan. So, uh, if the, a tree falls down, a big one, all these small, small seedlings try to reach that gap. Yeah, They want to be the first there on the top, because that's survival or not survival. Yeah, So they have the program to, to fill that gap where there's light they want to grow. Yeah, And when there's too much light, you provoke shoots that you cut next year and cut next year. and So have a central leader makes sense to get to get the, the tree the chance to do that, yeah, controlled in the system. Anschneiden, danke Franzi. Um, um, you, if you, um, um, the, because the tree, the, the apples are so, uh, so heavy, um, the tree is not, the wood is not able to hold it without our, our help. So we have to, the, 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 sh the tree produces some shoots on the top maybe, and if we leave it, because we are happy, oh, the tree is growing so fast, uh, I don't want to cut it, it's, it's, uh, I like that it's so high. And, yeah. But then, uh, and I've tested that uh, uh, myself a lot, because I was thinking, oh, yeah, I'm in this, in this situation next to a road, I want to start with a crown, but I need one meter more. I don't cut it this year. And then one pear, in this example, one pear was hanging on the top and the whole thing was whoop, yeah, was hanging like this when I come back. So always cut half of it or one third of it to, to, um, to, to make it more tough, yeah, that if there is an apple on it, it holds the apple or the pear, this big fruit that wants to, yeah, where gravity wants to, to bow it down. So if there is a shoot, cut it and if uh, all cut all the structures uh, that you want to keep it's a uh, it makes no sense if you if you hear it the first time but you have to cut a little bit back to be sure that it stays in this shape the next year i cut the central leader because in this situation the the pear that i want to grow quite high and it was just this when i come back so always cut the things that you want to keep tough that doesn't matter if it's a central leader or if it's a big side branch or whatever. Um, if you want to, to keep an, an, uh, a branch in the shape, you have to cut it back to, to stabilize it. It will produce, if you cut a, a, a branch, the central butt on the top 
has a, a genetic information to to be to get more more energy than the site and if you cut it there is no central leader so every bud will try to be that central leader so you will provoke a lot of shoots but a lot of shoots mean it means a lot of leaves a lot of leaves means a lot of i want energy this 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 um branches or the the leaves are pumping and using the energy so this branch will become bigger um, but you have to cut more uh, because if you if you cut a central leader or a, a, the central bud every bud tries to be the central so you have to choose next year so if, if you cut once you have to cut c continue cutting but if you don't cut this will be the desired result and that's not really an option yeah so planting fruit trees that have been bred for thousands of years and the apple was not bred by the human by the way it was bred by the bear in Kazakhstan who select the nicest and pickles apple and transport it and shit it and then the trees were growing it's just so the bear was collecting the apple yeah there, there's a difference between um, to cut a little bit of it and cut it completely if you get want to get rid of it cut it completely and there's um, a ring sometimes around the base don't destroy the ring but cut it directly like two millimeters behind that ring yeah, it, yeah there's no really a ring mm. here's a ring yeah. yeah or here there's a ring so, um, so if you want to get rid of this cut it there and if you um, want to to make it more stable more tough you cut just one third of it maybe uh, if you, grass is sending hormones to the to the soil to the tree to stop growing the, there's a grass competing against the trees and especially young fruit trees are not used to to fight against grass they will not grow quite uh, well when there's grass around the the trunk and there has been a study done that if you um, have no grass in the in the um, mm -hmm. surrounding one meter, uh, then the tree will grow seventy percent faster. So that's a big thing to get rid of the grasses. You can plant something else there. There's no problem with, I don't know, some flowers or whatever, some shrubs. You can do that. Uh, but grass is a tree killer. In the long run, it's no problem. Old trees can stand that, but young, young maybe the first five years or as long as it needs to <coughs> establish the tree and get a tough tree, you have to do that. And even in old trees, when you see they, they stop growing, yeah, this it's the hormone. It's also the if you disturb the soil, you destroy the humus particles there, and you which is sounds bad, and it is in a way, but in this scale it's not really a problem and you you feed the tree with the humus because the nitrogen is leaking into the roots and the tree can can uh, use that when there's too much shoots too too much nitrogen the the, the branches will get wobbly yeah? yeah often when you buy commercial nursery uh, trees and they have just thrown so much nitrogen there that it's three meter shoots uh, it has no time to to get enough sun to produce the the um, the things that are needed to get frost tolerant. So a branch needs sun to get frost tolerant. Yeah, when it's just shooting, 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 and it's shooting still till till the frost because there's so much nitrogen, it's not frost tolerant. It will die back, and it's not a robust and tough structure. Yeah, the, the question was how to, uh, what's the period to, to prune trees uh, or to prune apple trees? Um, it depends. It always depends. Like, like maybe if learning the course, it always depends on the situation. Um, so when I have a very a tree like this, I only would, would uh, cut in winter because this slows down. I don't see a good growth in this year. So all the energy was going into fruit. So the tree is is um, put his energy into fruit instead of growing. It's always find the balance, yeah. And um, 
I want to cut this in winter because then the energy is stored in the wood in the in the um, roots. So when I cut it in winter, it reacts with growth. When I cut it in winter, it reacts with slowing down. The, uh, when I cut it in summer, it reacts with uh, slowing down the growth and do more and uh, put more energy into fruit. So when I have these. For example, a, a tree that is very wild growing, three meters everywhere in the tree. And it's it's very, uh, yeah, like I've, I've cut too much. Then I can prune that in, in summer to make it more, put it, put it more energy into the, to the fruit and slow down the, the energy. There's a special angle where you cut bigger uh, branches. Um, often it's, uh, the tree shows you how where to cut when there is this ring but for example here there is no ring yeah, you cannot see a ring here but it's it's a combination of um, cutting it uh, making the smallest wound that possible it would be like this but then we have a, a spike here when I cut it here there would be a, a red angular corner yeah. and this end will not be supported from the tree because it's not in the on the way to the top yeah so a, a combination of cutting it directly like on the bra on the trunk that would be a big wound and cutting it the smallest cut a combination of that in the middle is uh, the compromise oh yeah and if you have big wounds you can put loam onto it never use this this plastic black thing that all the gardeners put there because this is a perfect habitat for fungi is water underneath the black, it's heated up because of the black, and there's material that the fungi can eat. So it's perfect for destroying the tree, put this black thing on it. And lehm, loam, is, um, yeah, it, it breathes, but it holds the, the water, and it's, it, um, it makes an atmosphere where the fungi is, it don't like to, to exist. Just when you have loam in your, your area, just dig a hole, put some lo uh, loam from there. Even even some dirt, if, you, if it's not loam, just put it on there. And wrap a, a piece of, I don't know, an old t-shirt or from your your um, old uh, uh, car thing, like, like like on a wound you would do on yourself. Yeah, this, this thing, just, just put it on that the loam stays there in place. And um, there were some tests done uh, with accidents where, where cars drive into trees and there were these big wounds next to the, ro next to the road on the trees, yeah. And they've tested with um, black plastic uh, around it and the, the black thing like this and leave it open and loam. And loam was absolutely the best. Um, and it's, it's a nature product. You don't have to care about how to get rid of the plastic one day or um, yeah, it just it just falls apart and you don't have to care about it. So our idea of tree allows the sun to hit the branch, to hit the, the trunk, the, yeah? But normally the tree would, <coughs> would protect it with leaves, yeah? So having chalk there, white, white things there, uh, it helps the tree to reflect the sun. It's like, like putting, putting it on your skin, the white stuff. It's the same principle. It protects the skin of the, of the tree. But better, putting this better, is make your design in a way that your trunk is protected. So grow a, a, a shrub there next to it that the sun is not hitting it directly. And often it's not the sun in summer or sometimes it is especially when you prune too hard and you open the tree but especially it's the, the winter sun that is that is not coming from the top it's coming from the side yeah it's it's so so um, yeah the angle is different and then the snow is reflecting even so you get a lot of sun and then the 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 one side is heating up yeah. And the other not, and then there's a, a gap uh, with the tension, with the yeah, um, and it, it splits open. So, so for this, uh, 
painting it white if there is no shrub in front is a good idea. There are different products, uh, one with with petrol stuff in it and also one with, with choke. Um, the one with choke, the natural version, you have to do that regularly because it rain washes it up, up. And be careful with the pH because choke is changing the pH of the soil. If you do that with chestnuts, which, which love sour soil, you will destroy the, the tree by trying to save it. Uh, as here you see, they use these um, chemical treated um, uh, needle from, from uh, evergreen yeah. wood. Yeah, They work for three years maybe, maybe for five if they are uh, thicker. But at the end it falls down and the tree needs it maybe for 10 years. So often uh, this falls apart and if they realized, okay, this, the, tr the tree ne still needs a post, then they put a second post in. And what happens is they hit the, the, the roots. Yeah? They put it not on the same uh, point because there, was, there is the old broken rest yeah, of the old. first one. So they put it right next to it. And that's exactly where the, the root that hits the first post while growing makes a turn and now the second post destroys the root and you get problems with your tree. So choose a post that lasts so long that you don't need a second one. And that often often is Robinia is the best choice. Um, it's it's the most uh, uh, it's the best wood where that stands uh, that has so much tannin inside that it can stand even 60 years in some conditions. Um, chestnut? chestnut is good, <coughs> oak is very good, um, yeah, but Robinia is really outstanding, the best. Um, and and um, look at the look at the rings of the Robinia. If there's these big rings, don't buy the Robinia. It's grown in a too fertile soil, growing too fast. It will not have the the qualities of that normally Robinia has. Choose one that has very narrow, narrow, narrow rings. Especially the best uh, Robinia is grown on poor kalk soil. Yeah, we've used this wood a lot, um, and it's uh, it's it's like a metal wood. Yeah, it's really like like that. It will stand in, in even fertile soils for years. Um, and it's, yeah, choose one of these posts or even two. Um, yeah. Okay.